So here we are back on the mooring. Um, after taking it out for his little shakedown run the other day, several things fell off. Uh, the van is no more. Uh, that popped its rivets at the bottom of the boom, uh, which you can't see because of the sail. So that's gone home for rebuild. Um, the other thing I need to do is take the main halyard winch off. Could do with a rebuild, to be honest. It's not feeling too healthy. Um, but mainly because this bracket um, has actually started to fail. So what I might do is pop that off. Maybe make one out of stainless steel to replace it. Or I might just weld that up. But I think if I welded that up, the strength it would lose with the the heat of the welding would probably make it unsuitable for that job the other thing i've considered doing is actually bracing behind it so there's nothing behind it so it just collapses into the mast um yeah either welding in some aluminium or maybe making a little wooden wedge to go behind it but um ideally i think the stainless steel bracket would be the best option so yeah i'm gonna pop that off i might take a 3d scan of the mast just so i can um just so i love faffing around really but uh, the idea behind that was I think if I could take a 3D scan of it, I could just measure it. But I could 3D print a section of the mast and then when I'm sort of battering the stainless steel into shape, I'd have something to test it up against and see whether all the holes are in the right places. So we'll see how that goes. So as you can see from this, um, the winch plate has kind of heavily deformed in the direction of the load. Uh, it's both pulled away from the mast at the top and compressed in towards the mast at the bottom. Um, and it's obviously been subjected to this probably over the 50 year life of the boat. And so we can see these cracks have formed and propagated down the curved edges of the bracket um and they're just opening up with every time it's loaded up uh we can see here on the 3d scan of it you can just get a real sense of how that plate is deformed um yeah anyway so i was able to design one um in some cad software and 3d print it um here we can see it held up against the original item I don't really know why I was copying the factory item so much. I just thought I'd give it a go more to get the mounting holes, if nothing else. But um, I took it to my fabricator and bad news. Uh, he doesn't think he can make it in uh, stainless steel in that shape. He feels the radius of the curves are too tight um, and he won't be able to form them. Now, of course, I could just make the bracket slightly bigger with some larger radius curves. and Maybe he could do that. However, did I do that? No, no, I didn't. All that stuff I said about welding, weakening the metal, be damned to the welder. In all seriousness, I don't have any videos of it welding. Um, and I have no idea whether this, uh, what kind of grade aluminium this was to start with. Um, I piled in a load of aluminium filler, uh, 40. 43 i think hopefully it, well it's going to be stronger than the non-existent metal that was the crack right so that's the theory i'm going with we'll see how it turns out so i've just been working on removing a couple of these old clam cleat things from the mast that we used to secure the spinnaker halyard um spinnaker pole up haul uh, when you're hoisting them from the foredeck uh, they're both well I've sorted this one up now but they're both really worn they used to slip all the time should often send the spinnaker flying into the drink so I've got some nice new ones uh, I've just got some bolts that won't come out so I have to attempt to remove those using a pair of grips 
They let him know how I get on. Great success with the grips. We're out. Nothing sheared. They're like M6 bolts, a bit chunkier than normal screws. Happy days. Okay, so I didn't film screwing the new cleats on, but honestly, they've made such a difference, um, particularly when you're short-handed. That ability to cleat them off at the mast, uncleat them off the clutch at the top of the cockpit, and then walk up to the foredeck and handle the whole kind of spinnaker pole and spinnaker drop yourself um, really does help. So yeah, those were a complete liability when they're worn out. Really good change. On to the next fix. And for those of you of a good memory, you'll remember this. It went. Yes, it was the infamous time my Vang departed company from the boom. Um, I imagine most people already know this, but I'll briefly describe what the Vang does. Um, so they come in a couple of formats, either rope or rigid, uh, like the one on mine. And the purpose of them is to basically allow you to control the tension of the mainsail leech. Uh, at any point of sail. So for example, if you're sailing downwind and you've let your boom right out so that your, your main sail is effectively acting as an air dam from the wind coming behind the boat, um, if you had nothing controlling the boom, because your main sheet is, is fully slack at that point, the boom could ride up. And what that would mean is the leech tension would be very low and the leech would open at the top of the sail and just bleed air off and basically depower you. That also has an impact on when you're sailing under spinnaker on stability of the boat, but that's a separate conversation really. So what is a rigid vang and why have I taken mine off? Um, rigid vangs, well they're not really rigid as such, they extend and contract to allow the boom to go up and down obviously. Um, and uh, the Selden rod kicker, which is what my Vang is has got a hydraulic strut in it a bit like on the boot of your car you have those hydraulic rams that you know push the boot open it does a similar kind of job uh, the advantage of these over soft fangs is that um, you don't need a, a topping lift uh, if you're reefing at sea you can literally undo your um, main halyard drop the sail and you don't need to worry about the boom sort of dropping and clattering uh, clattering around on the cockpit roof. So when I took mine off I noticed that actually it didn't move anymore it was kind of frozen solid I mean you you could get it to uh, extend but it, it wouldn't compress past a certain point uh, so yeah I took it home and this is this is what I did. It's probably worth noting that at this point uh, I still had no idea why it was jammed or whether or not it had the gas strut inside it or whether it was just literally a solid vang that was hollow in the middle. So this is the moment when I discover it does have the gas strut. Yeah, you gave it a whack by putting the vang back in. Oh, it does have the gas rod. Hey, that's cool. I mean, obviously it's knackered, but still pretty cool find. So at this point, it became fairly apparent what had failed on, on the Vang. So that gas strut has basically rusted solid, so the internal piston no longer moves in it. When that jammed, those plastic end fittings for it had obviously deformed under the load of, of being crushed without any, any give in the uh, cylinder. Uh, and they had then completely jammed solid inside the bank. So yeah, luckily all of those are service items and are sold by Selden in kits so you can replace a whole lot. It's worth noting that they'll sell you different spring strengths as well depending on the weight and size of your boom. Okay, that's all for this video. Um, next video I'll be putting the Vang back on the boat and having fun with rivets, no doubt. Yeah, then hopefully some sailing. Or I get all the water out of the boat, I don't know. Maybe the electrics, maybe some sailing. Uh, yeah, here's the barn. Not a lot's changed, except the roof is no longer on my house. So, well, no longer resting on the roof of my house. So that's a good thing. Till next time.